Before we dive into today's video, I just want to remind everyone who does not watch my Wednesday pull list video that I have started a Discord server. Its link is down in the description below, and it's all about comics. We got new comic book day chatter, we got final order cutoff speculation chatter, general comic chatter, and it's just a place to share your love for the hobby of comic books. Because you know what? We all love it. If you're watching this video, you obviously love comic books. So come join the Discord. It's a lot of fun, and I want to give a huge shout out to my new friend Omar uh, which is purely goaded on discord and he also has a YouTube channel that he just started called goaded collectibles so make sure you guys are checking that out again that link will be down in the description below Omar thank you for helping me set this up to actually look like a true discord server it was all his work so thank you thank you thank you and he did it out of the goodness of his heart how many people do that? Not many. And it was absolutely awesome. So guys, if you have not joined yet, make sure you guys are going over and do it. I had a great conversation with a bunch of people yesterday about that Wolverine issue number 42, the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Arthur Adams. I was trying to find one. There was a few people trying to help me find one. They sent me a couple links. I was late on ordering them. And yeah, I missed out on it. But that's how it goes with those 1 in 25s when they get really hot. I'm not mad about it. It's just the way things go sometimes. But guys, if you guys are interested in joining this awesome new Discord server, which is all about comics, link is down in the description below. All right, guys, one more thank you to Omar. Omar, you are the man, and let's go ahead and dive into today's video. What is going on, comic book fans? Welcome back to the channel. And guys, today is Thursday. February, that's right, February 1st of 2024, and it's time to record, well, I'm recording, you guys are watching my final order cut off speculation and recommendation show. And you guys know by now that this is all about final order cut off speculation. There is not gonna be any recommendations in today's video. I didn't find any new number ones that really drew me in. So this is a purely spec video. So if you're not into that, you guys can go ahead and skip today's video. But if you're into final order cut off speculation, let's not waste any more time, guys. Let's go ahead and cover my three weekly speculation reminders. Before we dive into these three reminders, if you guys are seasoned speculators or you guys have seen this video series before, you guys can look down in the description below and skip right ahead to final order cutoff cover lover picks. But if you guys are new to this video series or new to comic book speculation, definitely stick around and hear these three weekly reminders. And the first one up, which is the most important, and I tell you guys every single week, you guys have to do your own research. Guys, this is comic book speculation. I am making some educated guesses on these comic books that I'm gonna present to you guys today. But what I need you to do is I need you to go check other comic book YouTubers you trust, other comic book websites that you trust, and other comic book apps that you trust. Gather the most information possible so that way you guys can make the best decisions possible for yourself. Because remember, you guys are spending your own hard earned money on these books. It's not my money, it's your money. And the second reminder that I have for you guys is that there are delays in comic books. So sometimes the book will show up multiple times on final order cutoff, and that is because its release date got moved for one reason or another. And the third and final reminder that I have for you guys is that I am recording this video on February 1st of 2024. It is now 9.23 a.m. and DC Comics, Marvel Comics, and all the indie publishers can add books to their final order cutoff list all the way up into the order deadline dates. And we're going to get to those in just a second. So what I need you guys to do is keep an eye on the comic book frontier. It is a final order cutoff speculation Facebook group down in the description below. It's run by my good friend Al. He does an amazing job of keeping the final order cutoff information up to date all the way up into the order deadline dates. And there's another website that I like a lot. It's coverprice.com. Again, link down in the description below. And they put out their final order cutoff speculation picks every single Sunday. So you guys can check out their list on Sunday. So those are my three reminders for final order cutoff speculation. Let's go ahead and find out what this weekend's final order cutoff order deadline dates are. 
All right, guys, if you're interested in picking up any of the books that I'm going to talk about in today's video, you guys need to get your pre-orders in by February 4th for your DC Scout and Vault books and February 5th for your Marvel and all the other indie publishers. Now, the reason why you want to get your pre-orders in by these dates is because you will save a certain percentage off these books on certain websites. Now, if you go to your local LCS, I don't know if they will give you that same discount, but there are sites that will give you up to, I believe, 20%, maybe even 25% discount off the cover price of these books as long as you're ordering by these dates. So if you like one of these books for speculation and you want to order, let's say like five or 10 copies of a book, it'd be a great idea to get your order in by these dates so you can get that discount on these books. All right, guys, those are this weekend's final order cutoff order deadline dates. Let's go ahead and move over to this weekend's final order cutoff cover lover picks. There were a lot of good covers that I was able to find on this weekend's final order cutoff that I think could do well on the secondary market, one right out of the gate, and also in the future. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and dive into these covers. And the first one up is Batman 89 Echoes issue number two with the cover C, which is the one in 25 ratio variant done by Raphael Albuquerque. Now, the reason why I like this cover is because we got three characters from the Batman movie or Batman 2 on the cover. You got Michael Keaton as Batman, you got Danny DeVito as the Joker, and you got Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. They're not exact lookalikes, but it has enough nostalgia where I think people will really like this cover. But guys, that is just, you know, me speculating. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is Power Girl issue number six, the cover F, which is the one in 25 ratio variant done by Dan Panosian. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous Power Girl cover. She looks absolutely fantastic. I actually like the stars, the one in the background, the ones that are falling next to her. It's a great color contrast to her skin and everything else. It is a gorgeous cover. Next up is Power Girl issue number six, the cover C variant, which is done by Jim Bartel. Now, I don't think this will do as well as the 1 in 25 because it is open order, but it's Jen Bartel, which is a great cover artist, and it's really, really nice. I love this cover more than the Dan Panosian one, but I don't think everyone will, but you know what? I'm speculating. I think this cover could do well. Next up is Power Girl issue number six. Yes, another cover, and this is the cover E, which is a foil variant done by Carla Cohen. No, I personally do not love this cover, but I gotta be better about putting covers that I do not love, because a lot of covers that I do not love do well on the secondary market, and this cover, I can see people really enjoying it's just not for me supergirl's arm in this position looks really weird it looks like long and skinny and weird and i don't know it's just not for me but i can see people really liking it it's also a foil and foil is all the rage right now all right guys next up is a great indie cover it is red light issue number three now this is the cover c which is the erotic film variant done by priscilla i'm not gonna even try to pronounce her last name and i think this just has a little oomph to it that I think it could do well in the future. This is a long-term hold that I think could be popular in the future. We're on the third issue of an independent, so I don't think there's going to be a huge order for this cover because it's not the cover A. I think a lot of stores that are picking up this book will most likely be ordering the cover A, not the cover C. So I think this book is going to be lightly ordered and it's really, really nice. It's also a great read. Next up, Harley Quinn, issue number 37. This is the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Danny it's just cool. It's a really cool Harley Quinn cover. It's also issue number 37 of Harley Quinn. How many stores are ordering 25 copies of Harley Quinn at this point? I don't think that many, so I think this book could be rare. Now, next up is just a great Scotty Young cover. And you guys know I show every single Scotty Young cover when I find them. This is for Aliens What If, issue number one, the Scotty Young variant. It's a cool what if story. We'll get to what's in the guts when we're on final order cut off speculation. Now next up, I'm not sure if this is just because I love the cover so much and I'm really enjoying this artist's um, artwork right now, but guys, this is The Sensational She-Hulk, issue number six, the variant cover done by Ben Harvey. There are some pretty good variants for this issue, but this one right here, it should have been the 1 in 25. This is such a great cover, and Ben Harvey has been putting out some bangers as of late. And yeah, I really like this cover, and I can see this being a good play in the future. It's not going to be worth like hundreds of dollars, but I can see, you know, this garnering 15, 20 bucks in the future. Next up, Star Wars, The High Republic, issue number four, the 1 in 100 ratio variant, which is a connecting virgin variant by Miko Suyon. Um, yeah, I personally don't like this cover. I believe this was on last week's video as well, 
but it's Star Wars and it's a Virgin 1 in 100. These covers just tend to do well, but guys, let me know down in the comments below if you're a Star Wars fan and you know if this cover is gonna be good or not. Now, next up, we have a really cool cover. This is Thano issue number four, the Snap variant. How cool is that? Now, this is done by Justin Mason. Again, I'm not sure how many stores are ordering a lot of copies of Thanos, and so I'm sure this cover is not gonna be like abundant. It is open order, so there's a good chance there will be a good amount of them out there, but come on. This is really, really cool. Now, next up are two 1 in 100 ratio variants that are virgins from Marvel Comics. I'm putting them on the list because you never know which one of these are gonna hit, and these are both actually pretty good. First one up is Ultimate X-Men issue number one, the 1 in 100 virgin ratio variant done by In Huck Lee. It's a new Ultimate title, um, X-Men, written and drawn by Peach Promoco, so I don't know how much buzz is gonna be around it because it's by Peach, but it's the new Ultimate Universe. Spider-Man blew up, everyone loved that story. We get in Black Panther, I believe, next week, Ultimate Black Panther, and I think the week after that, we're gonna be getting Ultimate X-Men, or maybe it's two weeks from then. But either way, I'm really excited for this Ultimate Universe. I think a lot of people are getting excited for it as well, so maybe these covers will do well because of the excitement for this new Ultimate Universe. Now, the next cover is definitely hands down way better than this in Huck Lee one, and it is Ultimate X-Men issue number one, the 1 in 100 virgin ratio variant done by Mark Brooks. We got, I believe, Storm on the front in um, armor, and they are amazing and gorgeous, and I love it. This Mark Brooks cover is actually really, really good in my opinion, and I think will do good right out of the gate. Now, next up is a really, really cool independent title. This is Savage Sword of Conan, issue number one, the cover B variant done by Gerardo Safino. This is really, really cool. I love the bright yellow background. I love the fact that Conan has a bunch of arrows in his back and he has a giant sword and a giant ax. Um, I believe this is gonna be an anthology book. I could be wrong, but I think I read the description. It's gonna be a bunch of stories about Conan from a bunch of different writers. And yeah, I'm actually excited to check this book out in this cover is so freaking good, so good. Now next up is Giant Size Spider-Gwen issue number one. This is the one in 25 ratio variant done by Betsy Cola. Guys, Betsy Cola does some really gorgeous artwork. She did one for, oh man, I'm blanking on the name of that cover yet, but it was in my best of 2023 covers. Um, it's not Shadow Cat. Hellcat, I think it was. It was so gorgeous. And this one right here is really, really good. It looks like we got um, Spider-Gwen in her like, you know, costume and also in her regular people, um, normal self form and she's like swinging and taking a selfie of herself. It is really, really cool and I love it. I think it's a great cover. It's Spider-Gwen. Yeah, I think it's great and I think it could do well in the secondary market. And the final cover that I have to show you guys is Lilo and Stitch issue number two, the cover F, which is the one in 10 ratio variant done by Edwin Gallman. You know what? I'm not a huge fan of these Disney books over at Dynamite Comics, but this cover right here is really, really good. And I think Disney and Lilo and Stitch fans could be really excited about this as well. So I'm putting it on the list. You guys do what you want with it. But those are my cover lover picks for this weekend's final order cutoff. Let's go ahead and move over to this next section, which is my second prints, facsimiles, and beyond. Now guys, a big caveat going into the second prints and beyond, a lot of books that are added after I record this video are second prints, third prints, fourth prints, and beyond. So keep an eye on the comic book frontier, the link down in the description below and coverprice.com, link down in the description below. So first up, I was able to find one third print on this weekend's final order cutoff so far, and it is Ultimate Spider-Man issue number one, the third print done by Sarah Pacelli. Now, there is no cover art for this book just yet. Again, that's a downside of making this video so soon. Um, if, while I'm editing this video, they do release it, because sometimes that does happen, I will make sure I add it right now. So maybe it's on screen right now. Maybe it's not. If it's not, just keep an eye out for it. Uh, maybe I will pin a link once it comes out to the comments down below if I can remember to do that. If not, you know what? You guys can do your own research. Now, next up is the one and only facsimile that I found, which is Wolverine issue number one. Now, this is the uh, reprint from the 1988 um, run of this book. There is a facsimile normal edition, and then there is a foil. So if you're into foil and you've always wanted to have this Wolverine issue number one, well, this is your time to get it for cheap, but it is a reprint. 
So, or a facsimile edition, which is a reprint. So, those are my second prints, facsimiles and beyond. Let's go ahead and move over to the next section, which are the books that had a little bit of speculation in the guts. All right, guys, I found five books so far on this weekend's final order cut off that had a little bit of speculation. Let's go over those now. First up is The Flash, issue number six, with the possible first appearance of the Inspector Pilgrim, a shadowy bubblegum chewing ally of The Flash. Next up, Suicide Squad, Kill Arkham Asylum, issue number two. Now, this is one of those books that's going to have codes in it that you can get stuff inside of a game. So some of these books do well because people want those things in the game and they're willing to pay a little extra um, once the book does sell out. But with this happening so many times up to this point, I'm not sure if this is actually worthy of you going after books like this in a large quantity and then trying to float them on the secondary market. But... I'm giving you guys the information. You guys do what you want with it. Next up, Aliens, What If, issue number one. Now, this is a limited series that questions what would have occurred if Carter Burke from Aliens survived the events of Hadley's Hope. And also, this is co-written by Paul Razor, the actor who portrayed Burke, which is, you know, that's pretty cool. All right, guys, two more books. Next up is Giant Size Spider-Gwen, issue number one, with the first appearance of Orlando Octavius, the adopted son of Dr. Octavius. That's pretty cool. This is a pretty cool cover A in my opinion as well. Next up, in the last book that I found that had a little bit of speculation in the guts, it's Ultimate X-Men issue number one with the first team appearance of the Ultimate X-Men, Armor, Maystorm, and others. So is that character that looks like Storm actually Maystorm? That's probably who it is, Maystorm. That's a really cool name instead of just regular Storm. I like it. All right, guys, those are the five books that I found that had a little bit of speculation in the guts. We've done the cover lover picks, we've done the second prints and beyond, we've done the guts, so let's go ahead and find out what my spec picks of the week are. All right guys, before we get into the few cover lover picks that I like, I'm gonna let you guys know, most likely you guys should be saving your money. There's nothing really with meat on the bones that we can chew into and really believe that we're gonna make a good amount of money on the secondary market by buying any of these books in bulk. So. With that said, I'm going to cover the few covers that I think could do well on the secondary market. So the first one up is Power Girl issue number six, the cover F, the one in 25 ratio variant, done by Dan Panosian. I think this is really, really gorgeous. And I think this could do well, especially since it's one in 25 of issue number six of a book that's probably not that popular. I don't know many people who are actually reading that book. So I think this cover is gorgeous and it's going to be a little rare. Now, next up, we're gonna skip all the way down to Ultimate X-Men issue number one. With the popularity of this new Ultimate Universe, I think these covers are gonna do well. They are also high ratio variants of one in 100 virgin variants. So stores are gonna have to order 100 copies just to get one of these. But with the popularity of Ultimate Spider-Man, I think stores are probably gonna order a lot more copies of Ultimate Black Panther, Ultimate X-Men, and any other Ultimate books because of the buzz around it. So there will be more of these out there in the wild. So. I still like them a lot. I think they will be good investments, especially right out of the gate. I'm not sure long term, but definitely right out of the gate. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to nothing else because I think those are the three covers that I think you could buy into and make money right out of the gate, but I could be wrong. Guys, let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts on my three spec picks of the week are. Now, like I said, I don't have any final order cutoff recommendations to read, but I do have a few new comic book day cover lover picks for next week's new comic book day that I think could do well on the secondary market. So let's go ahead and check out those now. All right, guys, next week's new comic book day is February 7th of 2024, and I found three covers that I think will do well on the secondary market. And the first one up is Birds of Prey, issue number 60, cover D variant, done by Pablos Villabos, otherwise known as Lobos. This cover, this cover should have been a 1 in 25, or a 1 in 50, or 1 in 100. It should have made, uh, they should have made this cover a little more rare, but this cover is absolutely gorgeous. It's that whole winter time um, theme that DC Comics was doing during the month of December in January, and this is just coming out now, but it's still so, so gorgeous. I absolutely love this cover. Um, yeah, 
definitely be picking yourself up one of these and put squirreling it away because I guarantee you, you guys will be able to make money on this in the future. The next up is a cover that I did not see until I was doing the research for this video yesterday. This is Ultimate Black Panther issue number one, the Boss Logic Ultimate Special Variant featuring what I can only guess is either Maystorm or Storm. Gorgeous. Boss Logic is such an amazing artist and I love the artwork on this cover. Again, I didn't see this until yesterday. I don't know how I missed it. It is so, so good. So, so good. I'm not sure where to get this cover. I don't know if it was like part of the open order or where. If I can find that while I'm editing the video, I'll put links down in the description below or you guys can go out there and find it for yourself. But this cover is gorgeous. Now, next up is the Sensational She-Hulk issue number five, the one in 100 virgin ratio variant done by Pablo's Villabos, otherwise known as Lobos. It's an awesome awesome cover. The only thing that hurts this cover is that there is a trade dress for this, which is also really great, but this cover right here is just fantastic. And the Virgin would look so, so good slabbed it up on a wall, maybe with a little signature from Lobos as well. But guys, great, great cover. Two by Lobos and one by Boss Logic coming out next week on New Comic Book Day. What a awesome New Comic Book Day for cover lover picks. And yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, guys, we are at the end of the video, and this is my time to thank every single one of you that are still watching this video right now and remind you that you guys are truly the legends of the comic book community. Thank you guys so much, or at least the Bruce and Stephanie comics comic book community, because you guys are amazing. And I really appreciate every single one of you that watched until this point in the video. Now, if you guys have not joined that Discord server just yet, link down in the description below, come chat comics. It's a ton of fun. We can chat comic book speculation, new comic book days like spec. We can chat anything. Anything comic book related, I would love to chat with you guys. Now, if you guys have not hit that like button just yet, do me a favor smash that like button. And last but not least, if you guys watched that video and you guys enjoy comic book content and you guys are not subscribed, what are you doing? Get yourself subscribed, hit that bell for notifications and smash that like button. All right, guys, have yourself a fantastic weekend and final order cutoff. I'll be back on Tuesday of next week with my Wednesday pull list. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.